before the passage of the Rehabilitation Act, Section 504, and before the ADA of 1990, people with disabilities could go to Parks and Rec and want to participate and just be told no. Um, we can't serve you. We don't know what to do with you. We don't know how to work with you. Uh, the most rewarding experience I've ever had was in Salisbury when I started my career. Um, there was one individual who was really, really difficult. He was an adult. When he was a boy, his father was very abusive and um, shot him in the face with a shotgun. Didn't kill him. So he did, he was he became disabled. So every time I would do a program, he refused to participate. When I came up here, the programming didn't exist for those population groups. And I looked at Winston, and Winston had a special populations division. Greensboro had a special populations division, and High Point had a special po populations division. And I said, well, I just thought to myself at the time when I, when I first came here, I said, well, maybe that's not a need. Parks and Rec departments are unique for municipalities because we are the most public part. We actually interact with people in a completely different and more exposed way than any other department for municipalities. So we are the bridge between institutions and the public and then putting um, those ideals of the ADA, for example, into practice. So that, that wouldn't happen without us. But first off, how long have you attended um, our facilities and programs and events? Oh, in Kernersville? Mm -hmm. The whole time we lived here, which is 38 years, I guess. Just recently is when I really got to know the staff, and that came as a result of running in the pumpkin run last year. And I had trouble navigating the website to register for the pumpkin run. and. And uh, y'all helped me do that. One of the things that uh, those of us who are struggling with our vision talk about a lot is people are, seem to be uncomfortable around those of us with low vision, either with the cane or a guide dog. They don't know quite how to react to us. And some of it is that they think, hmm, maybe they're not very intelligent. Well, that's not true. We're just a little bit slower. So we rely on other things, uh, more along the lines of fields and colors and contrast and the size of lettering and things. And I think that's what Parks and Rex is starting to recognize and to focus on developing accessibility for us. And that, that's the key for us, is just getting there and being able to, once we get there, navigate through the facility. Some things to keep in mind is that people with disabilities are the largest minority group in the U.S. because it affects people of all ages, all classes, all gender identities. Even if somebody doesn't acquire a disability as they age, they do lose functioning. So it's not some, it's not an other type of people. Um, it, it's all of us and it will impact all of us eventually. So if we go ahead and have systems and processes in place to serve people of all abilities, it just only it, it helps all people, not just people with that one attribute. So we're going to transition to talking about Zumba. Are you ready, David? I I love this Zumba. Um, uh, I I love Katrina. There's a lot me. Did you you said you love Katrina, the Zumba instructor? Katina. Uh, she loves me. She loves me. Love uh, for for house. Walking out. Are there some of the songs that you do routines to? Like this. Uh-huh. <laughs> this. How long have you been participating in Zumba? Um, let's see. In three years in October. Do you feel welcome at Zumba? Do you feel like you belong? Oh, I do. You do? Why is that? Because people, are people welcoming? Yeah, welcoming. Um, and uh, nice and cool. That's awesome. Peace out. Even within the disability community, like there's a difference in the respect of um, autonomy and choice that we give a Tom 
versus a David, and it's based on their intellectual abilities. There is a hierarchy of respect. So like we'll think like a veteran is noble, but what Ernie was saying is like there's a kid um, with behavioral issues and he was seen as like an outcast because he's difficult, he's hard, and he doesn't communicate verbally. And so that's another problem when people think about the ADA, I think they think about wheelchair ramps because that's not the only part that they see. You look back at how the ADA came about and what it has done, um, and, and you're reminded that as a, a, as a parent, that it's your responsibility to educate people on that and to force that inclusion and to move the ADA even further and make sure that your loved ones have what they need to have, what is right in society, what, what everybody else has. David doesn't want more, he just wants the same. He doesn't want to be the star, even though a lot of times he becomes the star <laughs> just because of his personality. He just wants to be included. He's just like everybody else and that's what that's what he tells people about having Down syndrome, that he's just like everybody else with a little bit of extra number 31 chromosome. Well, you fast forward all the way to 2017, um, and we're working on a project at 4th of July Park where we're going to do an improved, uh, uh, a minor renovation to improve uh, accessibility. So once the project was done, we had a grand opening. We opened up to everybody and said, hey, grand opening, fully inclusive park. So we had a huge turnout of individuals with disabilities. So I, just, I assumed that a lot of those individuals coming out were from Greensboro, High Point, Winston, that came in for this park. Because it was the first fully inclusive park in the, in the triad. Well, I, that's what I assumed. And then I started interacting with folks and just say, hey, where are you from? You know, how do you like it? Can we improve anything? Do we miss anything? And I come across and all of a sudden I realized that all these individuals lived in Kernsville. I was like, oh my God, you all live in Kernsville? And they're like, yeah. And it was, and one mom in particular, she was like, I either go, I'll go twice a week all the way to Charlotte, and twice a week I'll go all the way to the side of Greensboro, almost to Reedsville, to, for services. I was like, okay, we gotta do something. We can't have people from South County having to go all the way to Greensboro or Charlotte for services. So the whole why, it really comes down to recognizing that there's a need, recognizing that this is, this is not about dollars and cents, it's about reaching out, providing these services to our citizens that need us the most. And it's inclusion. It's not, not just the disabled, not just the ones that are able-bodied, it's not just the, the high income, low income, racial groups, it's, it's inclusion, it's everybody. So it's about being completely even all across the board. So uh, that's why it's important. My biggest hope is that we will have a strong participant base of people with disabilities participating in our general programming and that we're able to grow and meet the adaptive needs of people with disabilities as well. I think the first step would be that for us to demonstrate to people and their families that we are competent and able to assist them in a safe way. I'm Casey Johnson and I am the Adaptive and Inclusion Coordinator for the department. I work with people with disabilities, older adults, veterans, any underserved population um, and provide modifications and adaptations so that they can be successful in our activities.